When I was looking at the prospect of losing my home, a good friend of mine called me and said, you know what, Jill, I think you need to call this number. Um, she had a family member that is a case manager at Bridge. First call I made, I talked to Paul. Um, I loved, I loved a voicemail. Um, gentleman named Paul returned my call, and then I was scheduled an appointment. Went in and met with Molly, who um, never knew it at the time, but would end up becoming a very dear friend. Um, just amazing woman. It was so easy to talk to her. I didn't know where we were going to go from there, whether we were going to get accepted, whether or not they had any open apartments. But I just, knowing she was there, being able to talk to her, and knowing that that program is a possibility, um, was huge for me. I liked her right off. You know, I could tell that she was a hard worker and uh, you know, just a real well-rounded person. I mean, she was involved in her church, she was involved in her kids' school, had, had some leadership experiences um, through her volunteer work, outside of her work. So I knew she was a, a pretty good candidate for our program. There's a group of people out there that care. They don't know me, they don't know my kids, but they care. So. We had a love-hate relationship, my mentors and I and I called him the good cop and the bad cop. Well, the mentors are volunteers that come through their church, and they decide that they want to help a family. They seem to have a passion for what they did. I mean, here they are taking you know, time out of their schedule every single week to go out and work with the family and it's completely volunteer work. How can you not find your own inner strength when you've got people like the mentors who don't even know you, have no idea who you are, and they're there supporting you. The day we went to see the apartment, as we were leaving, um, I was getting emotional, <laughs> of course, and one of the mentors just reached out and gave me a hug and said, you know, it'll be okay. And it was. Well, the first conversation Jill and I had right after she got into the program is that she didn't have a high school diploma. And, you know, she had worked her way well up into this corporate environment without it. And I knew that that would be the first thing that she needed to get. Going back to school, oh my gosh, it was almost like prom night. Yeah, the butterflies and walking to a school at my age. I was extremely nervous. I thought, first of all, it's going to be all these young kids are going to look at me thinking, what is this old lady doing in her classroom? The first week, um, just a roller coaster of emotions. Let's see, I walked into the wrong classroom, sat down, and had to get up um, in front of all these kids who were laughing, but they were laughing with me. I mean, it was fun. The, the kids were great there. They were supportive, but teasing. Um, they got a kick out of the fact that mom was doing homework. Uh, I remember I would tell them, you know, mom's got to do homework, and they'd be off giggling. And I mom's doing homework. They were right there high-fiving me when I would get good grades, and it was almost like the roles kind of reversed a little bit. You know, how, mom, how'd you do on your test? Mom, did you get an A on your test? You excelled in school. I mean, she was getting an A. You know, and that, that in itself was probably a boost to her self-esteem. And um, 
probably, you know, great, you know, great for the kids too to see mom, you know, that they're all working on homework and, you know, that was probably really great for them to see as well. I knew she was going to be okay. Some semesters where I was doing 24, 27 credit hours. I mean, it was insane. But I got the three years done in two with high honors <laughs> while homeless. I wrote a paper, I want to say it was probably my third semester. Um, Dr. Kriegelstein was my professor. And up to this point, she still had no clue um, what we were going through. I was a student in her class. We, we got along great, but I, I was a student. She knew nothing about my life. When I was writing this reflection paper, the topic was homelessness. And it, it just started flowing. I mean, all of the feelings that I had from the beginning of our journey up until that point, um, and it just all poured out on paper. Yeah, she gave me my paper back and she wrote a comment on it. I think she circled a part and she just put, wow. She said, you know, I had no idea. And I thought, no one does. No one has an idea who that person is sitting next to you. Who this, this person is that, you know, you, you see in class every day. No one knows who the homeless are. She talked to me um, and asked me if I was ever at a point where I felt I could talk about our journey, that she would love for me to talk in front of class. And it was in that semester, it was towards the end of the class when we were all doing our presentations. I told her, I said, you know what, I think I'm okay. I think I'm ready.